Explain like I'm five how does pushing a car that won't start help start it. Usually to start a car. A little electric motor spins the engine until it has enough strength to spin by itself. This needs a lot of energy from the battery. So a dead or low battery cannot start the car. However, if the engine is connected to the wheels referred to as being in gear, you can spin the wheels to spin the engine. Instead, pushing the car then spins the wheels which spins the engine which can then start and spin by itself. The car must be a manual transmission for this to work. An engine starts by the starter motor forcing the engine to turn until it catches and then runs on its own. When you roll start a car, you build up enough speed that when you put it into gear and then release the clutch, the wheels and transmission now force the engine to turn until it catches and then runs on its own. Basically instead of the engine moving the wheels, you can use the wheels to move the engine. It's easier in second or even third gear. If the car isn't starting because the battery is low, what's missing is actually the initial input from the starter motor. In a manual transmission car, engine and drive shaft are fully connected when the clutch is engaged. So you can start the engine turning by pushing the car with the clutch disengaged which turns the wheels and thus the shaft and then engaging the clutch which transfers that rotational energy to the engine. Once the engine is turning over then the power is coming from combustion rather than the battery. It turns the engine over by powering it backwards through the wheels. Sort of like the pull start on a lawnmower. This will help if the battery or starter motor is dead. But generally won't help if there's more wrong that's keeping the engine from starting you need fuel. Air. Spark. And compression. Also requires a manual transmission. So you can disconnect the engine from the wheels to get the car moving. Then reconnect it to start the engine. To add to what others have said. You also need to make sure that the ignition is on. Otherwise the engine doesn't know to deliver a spark. It's also best to use second gear as it creates less engine braking. Also remember to dip the clutch if when it fires up to stop the car from flying off or stalling. If they hit the brakes. Like others have replied. The vehicle has to have a manual transmission in order to attempt a push to start. Automatic transmission has the gear locked. So you can't build momentum to pop the clutch into gear. Before your mower had an electric start you had to pull a rope to spin the engine to get it to fire. Old cars and tractors had hand cranks for YRS. Rolling the standard transmission car allows a start without the electric starter. Your engine is connect to the transmission by a big spinny wheel flywheel when you start your car a smaller spinny wheel on an electric motor spins the big spinny wheel starter motor. Then the combustion of the engine takes over and the car is running. Push starting a car works because when your wheels spin, the differential spins which makes the transmission spins. Ergo the big spinny wheel spins. Nowadays, it doesn't. But when more manuals were around you could do what's called a bump start. Google it. The way a car starter works is it's a gear that spins the engine until the engine is able to start. And run on its own power. In a manual transmission vehicle. Pushing the car makes the wheels spin. Which makes the transmission spin. Which makes the engine spin until the engine is again able to start and run on its own power. If your battery is dead and thus the traditional starter cannot be used you can do what I just described to make the engine spin. I had a 1983 Toyota Tercel that I would start that way during the very cold Minnesota winter months. The car was so small and light that I could do it on my own just needed a little decline.
I had an 87 Mustang that wouldn't start if it was raining so when I had to push start it. I also got wet. It wasn't until a couple of years after I got rid of it that I learned it was something Ford knew about but decided not to tell anybody. A car is a machine where all the parts need to work at the same time in order for it to move. There's two ways to get the parts moving. 1. Use the starter motor which is done be turning the ignition. 2. Push it. When you push it, the wheels turn, which makes everything else move. And then when you release the clutch, the engine turns too. This only works for manual transmission cars with a dead battery or a broken starter. You roll the car and engage first gear. The wheels turn the engine, just like a starter would do. And the engine should start up. Is there an RPM that must be achieved for the trick to work? Safety note this same principle of cranking the engine manually works on lawn mowers. If you're ever working on the bottom of a mower, disconnect the spark plug first. Moving the blade too quick can cause the motor to catch and blade to spin. That's a bad day right there. In addition to turning the engine with the wheels like a starter, there's a few other reasons why this works. There may be water or air in the fuel system. And forcing the motor to turn over for a longer time at higher RPM will cycle out the bad fuel until it hits the right clean fuel air mixture to ignite. Also, if the rings are worn, then the piston may not be making enough compression to get to the right air fuel mixture for it to burn. Forcing the oil pump to run longer at a higher RPM will lubricate and seal the rings enough to increase compression. Maybe it was just coincidence. But when my starter was crapping out, rolling forward a tad seemed to help it start. X200B. X200B. But bump start is the answer you seek and got elsewhere. Seeing a motorcycle kickstart mentioned here. But not a car crankshaft. That was the starter before the starter. Can you do this with a start-stop button on a manual car? I struggled with that once. Had no problem on key cars. Must be a manual. The Powerglide transmission has entered the chat. Only ever seen it done once. Never understood how it worked. Thanks for posting this so now I understand what happens. Imagine that your car engine is a slinky at the top of the stairs. Once it has gotten started turned over it will keep moving of its own accord in the case of the slinky the energy is generated by gravity. In the case of a car engine the energy comes from gasoline. The car battery produces that initial push that gets the slinky car engine moving. If the car battery is dead. You need to get the slinky car engine moving some other way. Pushing the car will accomplish this. A combustion engine must be moving turning operating to generate enough torque to keep itself. Moving turning operating. So, if an engine is stopped completely, something besides the engine itself needs to initiate that movement turning of the engine. This can be an electric motor. Or, if you have a manual transmission, the wheels of the car, since they connect to the transmission, which in turn connect to the engine, you can use that. I had a little Mazda I bump started for about a year until a drunk guy hit it, causing it to catch fire. Yes, it has to be a manual transmission, and a slight downgrade on a hill helps. Just put the car in first gear. Roll push it down the hill with your foot on the clutch and once it's rolling. Take your foot off the clutch and the engine will start. 